Forests of Mist Species Here you can find important species such as dragon, chagualo, and encenillo trees. There is a great variety of Lauraceae, as well as bromeliads, mosses, and lichens. There is also a great variety of orchids from what we can observe here in the forests. As for birds, you can see and listen to a great variety of them, especially in the morning hours. As for mammals, you can find sloths, ocelots, ocelots, there are ocelots? Yes, in these zones, in these woods, in these forests all over Colombia, you can find ocelots, oncillas, which are rare and therefore endangered, threatened with extinction, making the forest an important place to hold and protect all the natural wealth of this region, which is part of the Andean forest. I see that there are some species that stand out from others. Tell me a bit about that. Yes, here there are some species of trees that are more dominant than others, that predominate more than others. One of the species you can observe the most here is probably the winter Winteraceae, since you can see it practically everywhere. What is particular about it is that you can recognize it by its grayish color and by its cinnamon smell. It's a pleasant smell. On the other hand, species like the Yolombo, you may see one or two trees during your journey. There is the chagualo, the encenillo, and the uvito de monte. It's very striking because of its flower, which attracts a lot of hummingbirds. The fruit is an edible fruit, very good. They say it has 500 amino acids, and it's very pleasant, since it can refresh your mouth while you're walking. The higuito, this species, is very important because many birds feed from it. There are other species, more shrub-like, such as the carboneros, as well as any high bush blueberry you can find. Here we found a type of moss. Some ancestors called it, or call it, poor man's bed. Because some people used to make their mattresses and pillows out of this moss. We're transitioning from a low, humid mountain forest to a highland paramo forest, so some vegetation here is part of the paramo. Sergio, that is a very thick tree. 
Yes, it's an important and adult species. But from here, I can't see or identify the leaf of the tree. But it could probably be a highland oak. Look, Abel, let me show you what I was talking about. Here we have an anturium. It's a species of epiphyte known for its heart-shaped leaf. What's particular about this leaf are the droplets, probably caused by this morning's rain or fog, which shows that the forest is a great sponge that retains water and regulator, therefore filtering it to water sources that are very important. Actually, look, there is even a small little animal here. Yes, it's practically microscopic. Yes, it's like a type of small beetle. Here, there are also some examples of lichens and moss. This little moss here also has some droplets. This little thistle here also helps to regulate the water. When the rain falls, it starts to accumulate here, and then afterwards, the water starts to fall slowly. When the drops have reached the ground, the water and rain then filters into the soil. In this species, this species here has many living microorganisms. It's an important ecological niche. Sergio, this leaf is very big. What plant is it from? That's from the yarumo, the tree you were asking about earlier, if we can observe it. Yes, look at it here. Look, this is the yarumo, the tree you were asking about. That species is found at around 300 meters above sea level up until the páramo. It's a very important species that is found on all the thermic floors. It benefits around 10 species between birds, mammals, and insects. It is a very, very important species.